Kia ora and welcome back. My name is Zoe Stiebe, your vocal coach for today. And in today's video, I'm going to be having a look at Diana Ankurinova. Hopefully that's how you pronounce her name. But feel free to let me know down in the comments if I pronounce that incorrectly. Today's reaction is brought to you by Robert. Thank you so much for your suggestion. I've never heard of Diana and I'm really excited to hear her. I've kind of listened to a little bit of her songs just while I was having a look at what she's like as an artist, who she is is you know it sounds incredible this girl sounds like a true alto a lot of singers come to me and they say oh i think i'm an alto uh no you're not altos are like hen's teeth when it comes to singing real altos that is alto soprano mezzo soprano those are voice fachs and that's what we call it in english as well it's a fach it is also a voice type. So it's a timbre of the voice. A soprano has a light timbre. Fill my blood running, the skies fall in. And then you have the mezzos, which are slightly darker again. Lord, is there I need and then you have the altos, which are like Diana, and they are really quite dark, rich sounding voices. I'm so excited to listen to it. Let's get to it. The world was on fire and no one could save me but you. It's strange what is a This is very reminiscent of Lana Del Rey's cover of the song with that slightly low and larynx sound. We've talked about this in a couple of other videos um, where the larynx, it's this guy in here, which houses the vocal folds, which create our voices when they swing or vibrate together. And what she's done is she's got a very low larynx. So you can create that by sliding down the scale, but not pushing. So it's not a, uh, and you can, and pushing your head back. Yeah. Uh, you, if I get out of the way of my microphone. You can see that it goes down, yeah? Now my larynx doesn't actually start that low. Yeah, that's the bottom of my larynx. My larynx actually starts here. You can find it. Draw a line from your chin down and you'll hit the first, <laughs> excuse me, pushed a little bit too hard. You'll hit the first sort of bump, which for me is quite high because I am a high soprano. And then you're going to sigh from the middle downwards. Oh. This song sounds incredibly different. The world was on fire and no one could save me but you. It's not particularly low though. I mean, for a female voice it is, but that's not completely out of the range. As I say, I'm a high soprano and this song is not too low for someone like me. But often what I would say if you're starting to sing a song like Wicked Game, I would consider moving the key up a little bit because even that, I never dreamed that I'd be somebody like you, it's not particularly high. And when you flip into, and I, you can use that lovely falsetto sound. So that was the stiff vocal folds, which are open. Um, you can use that falsetto sound to reach further up in the range, which suits the style of the song as well. What we did to play, to make me feel this way.
I am making like a kind of slightly funny expression on my face. I believe that there is no one to say whether that is a good sound or not a good sound. Uh, Deanna has won a lot of singing competitions and she's been very successful with the sound that she has created. The only reason why I was making that face as I was listening to it is because I want to know how sustainable the sound is. I want to make sure that someone like Deanna can actually, Diana, Deanna, Deanna. I'm really unsure if it's Deanna or Diana but I'm going to go with Diana. I want to make sure when singers are coming to see me that they are making a sustainable sound. So they're not putting on any effects that is going to cause them damage in the long run. I don't know what's going on with her voice. If she was to come into my studio and sing like that, I fear that there might be some limitations to the upper register, but it doesn't seem like she's keeping that really dark kind of squeezed sound when she goes up further, which makes me believe that she knows how to control the sound. Most importantly, when you're doing any type of effect, so if you're putting on any type of voice, which is absolutely fine. Cher does the same when she's singing. Shakira is the same when you hear her sing in Spanish and then you hear her sing in English. They sound completely different. That's not to say that they're good or bad. They just sound different, yeah? Yeah. I just want you to know that the sound that she's creating, that's very affected. That didn't sound like the sound right at the beginning of her song. So without the was I actually can't even make my larynx go down that low because she's singing a low note with an even darker larynx, which I tell you, it's no mean feat. I mean, that is something seriously hard to do. So she is doing the so to want to fall in love. She's doing the falsetto with a lowered larynx, and that's how she's creating that darker tone. Her tongue is very flat in her mouth right now, but she, her pitching is great. That's not to say anything bad about it. Her pitching sounds bang on. She's doing a really lovely job of the of her performance. It sounds really lovely. I just want you to be aware that when we're talking about extreme vocals, and this is an extreme vocal, I would call this extreme singing. This is a low larynx, not just low word. This is like a low larynx. This is like to her feet low larynx with a really flat tongue. I would then want to go and make sure that she could sing absolutely everything else without any effects because we want the effects to be something that we put onto the voice and not something that needs to be used as a crutch for the sound because that makes us quite inflexible when it comes to singing higher, lower. We want the entire instrument to remain really flexible. That doesn't mean though that when you go and create a clear sound that you can't then go and use a lot of effects. It just means that you can create a healthy sound and then you can also go back to the effects and marry them together. Vocal health is so important because it's about a long, sustained career and not just a flash in the pan. I can sing this once sometimes if I've had a nice breakfast. Just at the end there, you could really see that. Let's just go back on that. No one could save me but you. The world was on fire and no one.
one could say me. I need to go and have a look at a couple of her other videos because I'm not 100% convinced that she's 100% an alto. It sounds like it in this sound that this is quite alto-y, but she's also very, very young and a lot of these voice qualities really only start coming into play when singers are in their 20s. I definitely wouldn't make a decision about what voice type someone is below the age of 18 because there are so many changes that we still go through in in our 20s and a lot of people think that females don't go through the same voice lowering that males go through but the larynx grows we go through a slightly smaller version of the process but things still go on hormones change and everything like that happens if you've got some value out of this then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button because I bring out videos just like this one every single week if you'd like to hear more from Deanna, then don't forget to comment below. I'd love to hear what you would like to be able to sing at home and more about your ideas for more reactions and analysis. Have a lovely rest of your day. Kaki te